It's Tuesday, April the 5th, King of the Mountain State Show, presented by the Dutch Miller Auto Group. I'm Chase Hill. My guest today is Bad Matt Adams out of Roseville, 24 years old now, getting ready to make his professional boxing debut. Matt, thanks for being here with me. Thanks for having me, Chase. I appreciate it. It means a lot. Matt, we've known each other now for a little over a year. I've gotten to know you pretty well, a little bit about your background. You know, you were a... Uh, uh, kind of a high school champion, state champion wrestler and went on to do some great things. You've had amateur MMA, you've had amateur boxing, you've put together a really good record. You really didn't expect it, but you gravitated toward the boxing ring. That's kind of your thing now. And I know you really like it less than two weeks in Madison, West Virginia, you're going to be uh, making your professional debut, catch us all the fans up to speed. Tell us a little bit of the backstory of how we ended up here on April the 16th, being a professional boxer. Yeah, it's honestly crazy to honestly think about it because a year ago when the, well, a little over a year ago when you got me in the first tournament, I remember I was trained for MMA fight and uh, Teddy asked me from VO2 when I was trained there, hey man, you want to step in? It's a late nose fight. Do you want to step in and get in this tournament? And I'm like, ah, I'm not a boxer, man. And my buddy Brody's like, man, just get in it. Just get in it. I'm like, all right, man, I'll, you know what? I'll be cool finding the same card with one of my friends. So I'm like, throw me in it. And uh, going into it, I'm like, I know I can scrap. I know my ground game is good, but this is boxing. And uh, it was whole, everything was new to me. But uh, I don't know, fought my way through. Had a lot of good opponents. Uh, Jesse Byron. I had uh, Gibson. Uh, then Gary at the end. That was a hell of a fight. But uh, no, now we're here. Uh, me and you went back and forth, and uh, I signed the fight pro. And uh, I'm ready for it. Like, April 16th, I'm ready. I'm coming. So, you know what the story of you from my perspective is comes out of nowhere. Like I, you know, I've spent 11 years in West Virginia boxing, um, pro amateur, all that stuff. I used to be the chairman of it, but the, uh, you know, I didn't know who you were. I knew Teddy bear and he, he said, let's go. And you got in there. I didn't know what to expect. And then I was really impressed. I mean, all the physical tools were there, the discipline there. Boxing's a tough sport, you know, uh, not no knock on MMA, but you know, sometimes in MMA, you get a quick breather. You're on the mat or up against the cage. You get a second to breathe boxing. You don't really get that. You love that kind of stuff. I mean, for a big guy, you've got good cardio. You push yourself. I've seen some recent pictures. You're in pretty good shape. You're ready to go. Uh, tell me a little bit about what it's like boxing compared to some of the other stuff you did. Yeah, uh, it made definitely a different sport. I mean, because you got to think, I'm a ground guy. Like, I was a, I was a ground guy. So, when I took someone down, I could, I could lay on them and catch my breath. A lot of guys don't realize that uh, transition to boxing, you know. When you're boxing, it's – it's all there. You don't, you can't rest. Yeah. You can lean up against them, but you're still getting hit. Like, uh, so with Gary, I leaned up against him. Cause I knew, you know, he, he was a strong dude. I knew he hit hard. Everyone knew everyone in West Virginia knows he hits hard. Uh, but I have a pretty good jaw, you know, but I rested up against him a few times towards the end. But when it comes to going forward, I'm going forward. I'm going to bring the fight to you. Well, I'm not going to be the first to back up and we're going to see, you know, uh, we're going to see who goes down first and you know, that we're yeah. going to go from there. And, you know, for a guy that's not had a whole lot of boxing training, a lot of it was natural. You knew when to take a break. You knew when to put punches together. I've really seen you grow over this past year. It's been awesome, man. It's, it's a great experience to watch you get to this point. Can't wait to watch it. A couple things a little bit different in the pros. Now we're going to three-minute rounds. I don't think that's a bad thing for you. I think you have heart and cardio, uh, and, and you'll push yourself. One of the fights last year, I can't remember which one. You'll know which one it was, but you were sick. It wasn't COVID, but you were sick. You were sick leading up to the fight you ended up driving down showing up and uh, probably shouldn't have been health wise in the ring and pushed yourself to a win um and, and i know that you've got it so three minute rounds that's a little bit different that's going to play into your hand i feel like as a heavyweight also 10 ounce gloves those big those yeah. big lunch boxes just got a little bit bigger you know 10 ounce gloves uh we're going to find out who can stand up to them and you do have a good chin i think you're made for the pro game even better than you were made for the amateur boxing game so i'm excited to see where it is uh tell me this what's the wife think what's people back home uh, you getting the support behind you everybody's behind you to do this tell you what uh me and the wife sat down last year when we got in this tournament she's she pushes me her and my daughter graceland um i have amazing support system when it comes to her family uh they told me they're like just go after it you know you know she uh was working a little bit of time and i'm working full time you know and she's like take some time off go after what you want and i told her when we first got together i'm like i fight sometimes you know she's like 
fight what in the streets? I'm like, no, I fight like in May and stuff. And she's like, all right, I won't watch that. She's like, I never got to watch you wrestle. We weren't together then. And uh, she comes on every time she gets front row ticket. She loves it. Uh, we took my daughter last one. She probably won't be coming to a lot anymore until she gets a little older. I don't want to, her growing up, think I'm a violent person. You know, outside the ring, I'm the most humble, big hearted dude, teddy bear. She makes me, she makes me a teddy bear. But uh, no, honestly, I'm surprised with the source support system I have. We uh, did shirt sale for me, and we sold a good good way is over 100 shirts. So I was surprised. Uh, a lot of big fans. I sold a lot to West Virginia people, too. So I got pretty good support down there, too. So Yeah, you're gaining, a, you're gaining a big fan base in West Virginia, just like myself. I mean, a lot of us didn't know who you were last year. Now here you are um, fighting in one of the few pro fights we've got on this event. Okay, let's, uh, let's move forward a little bit. Um, your fight coming up is with C.J. Matthews. He kind of had the the unsanctioned backyard uh, upbringing into the sport. He got into ours. He's fought for some different promotions and stuff. He wants to be a professional, feels like he's got enough fights under his belt to get in there and do what he needs to do. I know you're familiar with him. What do we expect here on April the 16th in, in Madison, West Virginia? Tell you what, uh, nothing but respect for C.J. Matthews. Uh, I like to do – we've talked several times, actually – when I fought Gibson, we were in the same corner. He ended up fighting down there, too. I think he ended up losing. But uh, we talked for a good while back there, you know. His goal is kind of the same mind, a little different. He wants to get money for his family and be able to support him with boxing. He came up through Sheep Beefs. He had a few boxing matches. Uh, but no disrespect towards CJ. He uploads McDonald's every day on Facebook. He wants to be a pro boxer, and all he does is talk about eating McDonald's. He needs to cut that out. I want to. I want the best CJ Matthews there is. I know we got a little under two weeks, so hopefully he cut that out by now. But if not, he needs to realize after this fight, win or lose, he needs to needs to do something more. Because I like to see do go far. He's a little older, and uh, he's gonna bring the fight. I know that he's gonna be swinging. So we'll see. Uh, even if I win, he's gonna tell people on Facebook he won. You know, the last three fights he lost, he said he won on Facebook, knocked dude out. So we'll see how it is. I mean, nothing but respect for CJ though. So one thing that I really respect him for is one thing I would never do because I super respect all the fighters. Anybody who gets in the ring has earned my respect and I try to treat him with that respect. Uh, one thing I do differently is like if something comes up and somebody has to drop out of a fight, I don't like really go crazy on them like a lot of promoters. I'm just like, okay, you know, but I understand we'll move on. That's why, that's my job is to fix it. Uh, I wish, and I never would, but I wish I could hold up a list of the names that I asked to fight Matt Adams in with 10 ounce gloves in a pro boxing match, because it's a lengthy list and nobody uh, wanted a part of it. And CJ Matthews did. So uh, that's one of the reasons he ended up in the ring was he had the guts and the professionalism to get in there and to do it. And like you said, to make a living and do some things, I hope he comes out and puts on the best performance he's ever had um, in all these things The may the best man win. Um, after this, you've talked a little bit about getting some next level coaching, some doing some different things, maybe visiting some gyms, uh, really getting yourself, your work schedule may be changing a little bit. Tell me, uh, tell me about the future plans there with, with doing some boxing training. Yeah. Uh, you know, not going to lie, man, you've talked back and forth about a little bit of everything. I've talked back and forth with my wife, uh, my family. I didn't get the best box train for my first. And that's, uh, you know, I put in work. Don't get me wrong. My cardio is going to be great. I'm going to come in shape. But uh, I didn't get the boxing work I really needed because I'm one of the people, like, if I'm going to do something, I want to do it fully. But with my work schedule, everything was hard. So I've, I'm going to uh, transition to focusing on more, getting the boxing gym, uh, cut out all the MMA really training. So I'm going to transition to go up to – I want to get with Chad Van Sickle. And then I want to go down. And I talked I talk to Jared Board a few times. I've talked to Jesse Byron, real good friends of Jesse, real good buddy of mine. Uh, I talked to him. We're going to go down there a few times a month after this, get him work there, and hopefully maybe getting some work with uh, Wolf. You know, I'm real good friends with Gibson now, so hopefully get some working down there. They both offer me a place to stay down there if I come down, me and my family. So they're real good people, so hopefully I can get down there a good amount for my next pro. You know, I put a good plan together for you. Um, the only way a plan works is if you stick to the plan. That's what I want to see you do. Uh, we believe in you. You got that because you earned it um, of the fighter that you are and the person that you are. People gravitate towards you. They, You have more uh, fans that, you know, just 
guys who love the fight game, love your style that you come in aggressive and, and how you can keep that pace uh, with such a big, strong guy. Haley Pennington said it on our last commentary. She says, I don't know how he keeps his pace. He weighs 100 pounds more than she does, and it's hard for her to keep that pace. So I'm impressed with everything. I just want to see you take full advantage of it. You get one shot at your, at your pro boxing career, and I really want to see you make the most of it. Um, tickets are on sale now at um, fighterticks.com backslash king. They can click your name so that you get a little bit of extra support from that to, from your fans. Um, <clears throat> we're less than two weeks away, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, April the 16th in Madison, West Virginia. Uh, king of the Mountain State 2022, our amateur tournament. We have 16 heavyweights, eight middleweights, eight lightweights, and then we'll have three professional bouts. Matt, the last question I got for you before we go is give me a name who's somebody in this tournament i know there's some some returning people from last year there's some new names who should we keep our eye on uh who's the matt adams pick to make a little noise in the tournament man I tell you what uh i've sat down and i looked at the bracket several times i've talked to my wife about it if i had to pick the finals and it, it's hard because you guys i didn't think you guys were going to get this good competition compared to last year i thought last year was going to be you no know, we had a lot of great guys last year too but you have a lot returning if I had to pick the final four right now, I'll pick the final four and I'll pick the final one. I want I want to see Gibson in the final four. I want to see Jonah in the final four, Lambert in the final four. And I, I think I think Big James. I really think Big James. I I box with him. He's kind of fights like me. He comes forward. He's a he's one of the wild cards. I think he can knock anybody out any given time. And you're talking and about I, James, you're talking about James Dodd, South Paul, yeah. little awkward, big guy, low center of gravity, kind of keeps himself really balanced. It's got more of an MMA kind of yeah. approach to I he could he could cause some problems in it. I I really think if I had to pick the finals, if Gibson doesn't make the finals, I see I honestly see I would look I haven't looked, I I can't think now if I'm wrong on this, but I think James and Jonah are on different side of the bracket, right? Mm-hmm. I like to see them two in the finals. I really think they have it, but tell you what, man, Gibson Lambert, them guys, them guys are animals, man. Well, it, Gibson, and Gib, Gibson Lambert squared off last year, and it was a great fight. When then when James got ready to announce the winner, nobody knew who he was going to announce. It was an awesome fight. They may end up seeing each other again. I Gibson's, I've been watching Gibson on Facebook. I've been watching Lambert. They've both been putting the work. Gibson, the thing about Gibson is he can knock anyone out. I mean, he's not Gary out before. Don't get me. He just has to flip that switch. He, I'm not saying I didn't get the best of him. I don't think I, I don't think anybody's got the best of Gibson. I don't think anybody, I don't think he's went out there and performed his best. If talking he goes with, out there, talking with his coach as much as I have, one of the things is, is he said, if he does flip that switch and he does put everything yeah. he's capable he's of together, killer. he said that nobody has seen how good Derek Gibson can be, including Derek Gibson. He's a killer, man. Like, I've talked to people to train with him. I've talked to people to be in the gym with him. He's a killer. And I honestly, if he wins this tournament, he needs to go pro. And uh, even if it's not with you, uh, which I hope it's not only because I want to run that fight back. And I hope Gary doesn't sign pro with you because I want to run that fight back. I love both them guys. I got more respect for them guys than anybody else I've ever fought. I love to fight both them guys again and put it, it'd be, it would be a big seller. So your fight, your fight both. With your fight with Gary Rowland in the championship last year was the best amateur fight, best amateur heavyweight fight I've ever seen in person. Yeah, so that, it was awesome. That's, that's what I'm saying. So I'm going Gibson in the finals and I'm going top four. I told you that's my pick. Matt, I'm very proud of you. Uh, you've earned this opportunity less than two weeks away down in Madison. It's going to be super exciting. I'm glad I get to, to sit there front row and watch your debut. It'll be something you remember forever. A lot of people say they remember their first pro fight and their last pro fight. A lot of the stuff in between is a little bit mixed. Um, very, uh, very excited for you. Just um, stay healthy. Keep yourself going. Um, and I'll see you here in less than two weeks down at the Madison Civic Center in Madison, West Virginia. Thanks for sitting down with me. Thanks, Chase. Uh, everybody get their tickets and be ready for a show. I appreciate it.